Hello, and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at quadratic functions, specifically writing equations in vertex form by completing the square. If you haven't already seen the video that introduces quadratic functions, now is the time to stop this one and watch that, because I assume that you've seen that, so you know the steps that we need to take in order to get these functions to be in vertex form. Let's get started. In our, f there it is, maybe. In our first example, we have f of x equals 3x squared plus 42x plus 72. We want to get that into vertex form. Right now it's in standard form. Then we're going to state the vertex and the axis of symmetry. Then we want to decide, will the vertex be a minimum or a maximum? And lastly, we want to find the intercepts of the graph. So there's a whole lot of information that these equations tell us. Okay, let's get started first by getting the equation in vertex form. Step one we need to make sure that x squared has a coefficient of 1, which means we need to factor out a 3. We factor out 3 from only the first two terms. So I'm going to factor out 3, then it's going to be x squared, uh, 42 divided by 3 is 14, and then we're going to have plus 72 over here, because that's not part of my factoring. Next, we need to complete the square. So we need to figure out what would be the constant of a trinomial whose first two terms are x squared plus 14x, such that we have a perfect square trinomial. How do we do that? Well, we take the middle term, we divide the coefficient of the middle term by 2, that tells us what the root is, and then we square it to get the third term. That would be 7 squared, which is 49, plus 49. Now, it looks like we just added 49 to the right-hand side, but in fact, we didn't. What did we actually add? Well, notice that the 49 is inside parentheses. So if we were to distribute back the 3, it, then we would have 3 times 49. So that's really what we did, is we multiplied 3 by 49, and that's what actually got added to the right-hand side. 3 times 49 is 147. That's a positive 147. So to undo plus 147, I would need to subtract 147 uh, from the same side. So what I do instead of adding the same amount to both sides is I add an amount to one side, and then I subtract that same amount um, on that same side. Okay, so now we should have a perfect square trinomial, which was the goal here. And it would be 3 times x plus 7 squared. And then if we have 72 minus 147, that's going to be minus 75. Okay, so there it is. Part 1 is done. We have it in vertex form. Hooray for us. Next, we want to state the vertex and the axis of symmetry. Well, once it's in vertex form, it should be really nice to figure out what the vertex is. It's going to be right here. It's the opposite of what we see. Inside parentheses, opposite of what we see. So it's negative 7. Out of parentheses, the same, negative 75. Good thing we're not graphing this one. So the vertex here, negative 7, negative 75. The axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is a vertical line, so that's of the form x equals, and it's x equals whatever the x-coordinate of the vertex is. So the axis of symmetry is going to be x equals negative 7, because that's the x-coordinate of the vertex. Up next, we need to decide, is the vertex a minimum or a maximum? How do we decide whether it's a minimum or a maximum? We look at a, or the coefficient of that thing that we just factored. Since a is 3, and we know that it's a min or a max based on its sign, since it's positive 3, that indicates to us that this graph opens up, and therefore, the vertex is a minimum, right? So the graph will look something like this, and this would be our vertex here at negative 7, negative 75. And so that vertex, negative 7, negative 75, is a minimum. So I'm going to say minimum. And the last step, we want to find the intercepts of the graph. To find the intercepts of the graph, I want to go back to standard form, because that's going to be a little bit easier to work with. Okay, so to find the intercepts, to find the y-intercept when it's in standard form, it's really nice because here it is, it's right there. So the y-intercept, I'm already done. That's plugging in 0 for x, and if I plug in 0 for x, the 3x squared cancels, the 42x cancels, leaving me with 72. All done there. Okay, to find the x-intercepts, however, um, a little bit more work involved here we need to um, see if it's factorable. So to see if it's factorable, and remember what we're doing when we're finding the x-intercepts is we're setting it equal, setting f of x equal to 0. So it's 0 equals 3x squared plus 42x plus 72. I want to see if this trinomial is factorable. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide out the 3, just to make my life a lot easier. All three terms uh, 
on the right hand side are divisible by 3 and 0 is always divisible by 3. So let's just make these numbers a little more manageable. That's going to be uh, x squared plus 14x plus 24. Now we want to see if it's factorable. So the target product is 24 and the target sum is 14. Are there two numbers that multiply to 24 and add up to 14? Yes, there are, 12 and 2. Um, we can use the shortcut because the leading coefficient is 1. So we can say x equals, just plug those that winning combination in, x plus 12 times x plus 2. Now we set each factor equal to 0. If I set x plus 12 equal to 0, what I'm going to end up with is x equals negative 12. And if I set x plus 2 equal to 0, then I'm going to have x equals negative 2. So I have my x-intercepts of negative 12, 0 and negative 2, 0. And I think we've completed everything that this slide asked for. Let's look at the next example. Okay, in our next example, we want to write the equation f of x equals 5x squared minus 15x plus 7 in vertex form. Then state the vertex and the axis of symmetry. Will it be a minimum or a maximum? Okay, so we're doing the same thing that we just did. Great. Um, if you feel comfortable, pause the video, see if you can answer all parts, and check back with me. Otherwise, or even if you did just pause, welcome back. Let's go. Let's go. First thing we're going to do is we need to factor out the 5 from the first two terms. So we're going to say f of x equals 5 times x squared minus 3x. I'm going to leave a little space there, plus 7. I'm going to leave that little space because x squared minus 3x are two-thirds of a perfect square trinomial. To find the third third, we're going to take negative 3 and divide it in half and square that. Negative 3 over 2 squared will be 9 fourths. So I'm going to add 9 fourths here. And is that really what I just added to this side of the equation? Did I just add 9 fourths? No, I didn't. What did I add to this side? I added 5 times 9 fourths. So 5 times 9 fourths, that's 5 over 1, times 9 over 4, that would be 45 over 4. Because I added 45 over 4 to the side, to undo that I'm going to subtract 45 over 4. Okay, so now I have my perfect square trinomial. This is going to give me 5 times x minus 3 over 2 squared. And then I want to combine these, these two numbers since one's a fraction. Um, I'm going to put this one over 1 and then the common denominator between 1 and 4 is 4. So I'm going to multiply this guy by 4 over 4. That gives me 28 over 4. 28 over 4 minus 45 over 4 will be not 20, it looks like 17, minus 17 over 4. Hopefully that's right. I think it is. Um, okay, and then that's that's it for part 1. Yay! So there's vertex form. All done. I'm just going to check my work here. 28 minus 45. Great. Okay, now we want to state the vertex. So how do we find the vertex? Well, now it's super nice. It's just right there. The vertex is positive 3 over 2, opposite inside the parentheses, same outside the parentheses, negative 17 over 4. And what I'm referring to there are the signs. And the axis of symmetry, axis of symmetry, this is a vertical line, and it's x equals, what is x equal? 3 over 2. Okay, so we've done this, we've done this. Will it be a minimum or a maximum? Well, that depends on the value of a. Since a is positive, that indicates to us that this is opening up, therefore, the vertex is a minimum. So I'm just going to put min right here. And lastly, we want to find the intercepts of the graph. Again, to find the intercepts of the graph, go back to the standard form that it was given in. I can already see that the y-intercept is right here. The y-intercept is going to be 0, 7. But what about the x-intercepts? Well, let's first check. Um, to find the x-intercepts, we would set the equation equal to 0. So it would be 0 equals 5x squared minus 15x plus 7. Is this one factorable? Target product is 35, target sum is negative 15. No, 35 is 7 and 5 and 1 and 35 and that doesn't add, neither of those combinations will add up to negative 15. So in this case what we want to do is we want to, you can either complete the square or you can use the quadratic formula. I'm going to choose to use the quadratic formula. So this will be, sorry not 0, I'm going to say x is equal to, remember quadratic formula, inverse of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. You might want to have a calculator handy for this calculation, all divided by 2a. Okay, so cleaning this up, 
I'm running out of space, so I'm gonna have to do some of this in my in my head and not actually write it out. Um, negative 15 quantity squared is positive 225. That when you square it, that will always, 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 always be positive. And then four times five is 20 times seven is 140. So what we're looking at is 225 minus 140, which will give us 85. And two times five is 10. 85, the factors of 85 are five and 17, so there's no perfect square factors besides one. So this indicates to us that we have two real intercepts. That means that this uh, parabola will cross the x-axis. Maybe not in the nicest places, but it does cross the x-axis. So the x-intercepts, I'm gonna write them out here if I can squeeze them in. We have one at 15 minus the square root of 85 over 10, comma zero, and we have a second one I think sometimes when I write down here it gets a little funky, so hopefully it doesn't. 15 plus the square root of 85 over 10. And you might be saying, wait, 15 and 10, they have a common factor of five, so shouldn't I simplify those to three and two? I like where your head's at, but no. Um, we simplify all three terms or we don't simplify anything. If you wanna split the terms up and write it as 15 over 10 plus the square root of 85 over 10, that's fine, then you can simplify it to three over two plus the square root of 85 over 10. But I just say, hey, why do more work if you don't have to? Just leave it like this. We can't simplify because we, it's, it's an all or nothing situation. We simplify all three terms or we don't get to simplify any terms at all. Since 85 is under a radical, let's just leave it alone. Okay, so in our final example, we wanna write the equation in vertex form. State, uh, we're basically doing the same thing. Okay, fantastic. So again, I encourage you to pause the video, see how you do. Okay, we're back. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna factor out that negative two. So that's gonna give me negative two. Now remember, I'm dividing these both by negative, so that's gonna change the signs. This is gonna become positive x squared. This will become negative four x, and then minus three. Okay, x squared minus four x, that's two thirds of a perfect square trinomial. What's the third third? Take this piece, divide it by two, square it. Negative four divided by two is negative two. Negative two quantity squared is four, so plus four. Did I just add four to the right-hand side? I don't think so. What did I really add? Looks like I added negative eight. How do I undo a plus negative eight? How do I undo negative eight? I need to add positive eight. So I'm gonna add positive eight to this side as well to undo the negative eight that I uh, put in there for my perfect square trinomial. Now we're ready to factor. This is gonna be negative two times x minus two quantity squared. Combine these, negative three plus eight is five. Okay, so now we know the vertex. The vertex is going to be two, five, right? Because it's the opposite of this and it's the same as this. And our axis of symmetry is going to be x equals positive two. Okay, will the vertex be a maximum or a minimum? Well, what's a? A is negative two. Since, and what do we care about the negative two? We care about its sign. Since it's negative, that indicates that our parabola is opening down like this which means the vertex is a maximum. So we're gonna say maximum. It's our first maximum, yay. Okay, and then last but not least, we want to find the intercepts of the graph. To find the intercepts, which form is ideal? Standard form. So we're gonna start there. The y-intercept, I can just look at it and I know that it's negative three. So it's zero, negative three. And the x-intercept, at intercepts, um, let's see, is it factorable? The target product is six, the target sum is eight. No, six and one, so close. Three and two, not so much. So I need to use quadratic formula or completing the square. I like quadratic formula for this um, since the leading coefficient is not one. So let's use quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, oh, b is positive eight, sorry. Uh, minus four times a times c all divided by 2a. And again, I'm gonna run out of space, so I'm gonna do some of this in my head. This is gonna be negative eight plus or minus the square root, eight squared is 64. So that's 64, and four times three times two is 24. There's three negatives, so this will be negative 24, all divided by negative four. Well, 64 minus 24 is 40, so this is gonna become root 40 right here. And 40 does have a perfect square factor of four, so this is four times 10, which means the square root of 40 will simplify to two radical 10. Okay, so now I'm gonna go up here where I have a little bit more room. We have negative eight plus or minus two radical 10 divided by negative four. 
Do all three terms have a common factor? Yes, they do. They all have a common factor of two, right? Eight, two, and four all go into two, or two goes into all of them. But I don't like the fact that the eight is negative and the four is negative, so I'm gonna divide everything by negative two, just to shake things up. You don't have to do that, but I just, it'll look a little bit cleaner if we do that. So if I divide everything by negative two, that's gonna give me the x-intercept that's going to be four minus the square root of 10 divided by two is one x-intercept, and the other one is four plus the square root of 10 divided by two. Now remember, I divided by negative two. That really doesn't, because this is positive or negative, it's not gonna really change that. It's just gonna switch it to negative or positive, but it will turn those two negatives back to positives. And again, it's fine if you don't, if you just have negative over negative, that's fine too. These have been examples of writing uh, quadratic equations in vertex form. Thank you for stopping by.